When you're on your feet all day, working in tough industrial environments like U.S. oil refineries, you need a boot purpose-built to perform. The classic Supersole 2.0 is a premium U.S.-made work boot specifically designed to stand up in tough environments while providing the comfort and safety features you require to get the job done right. It all starts with the 2.0 urethane sole. This sole is called the 2.0 because it's made of two densities of urethane. The outer skin is a high density urethane that is extremely abrasion resistant, as well as chemical, oil, and gas resistant. This skin wraps around a low density urethane inner core. This provides cushioning support under your feet. The combination of the two densities gives you both durability and comfort. The upper portion of the boot is made of premium leather made in Red Wing, Minnesota for unmatched quality and durability. A Comfort Force footbed has been combined with the cushioning inner layer of the sole. This combination provides you both support and cushioning to keep you on your feet longer. Super Sole 2.0 boots are available with a wide variety of safety and comfort features, including safety and non-safety toes, electrical hazard protection, puncture resistance, insulation, and waterproofing. They're also available in three heights, including 6-inch, 8-inch, and pull-ons. And these boots are built to fit the most challenging foot sizes and shapes. They're available in a range of sizes from 7 to 15 and widths from A to H. There's sure to be a pair that will fit your feet perfectly. I'm about to uh, polish these boots and I thought it would be a good idea to take some before pictures or a video of what it looks like before I polish them. But you can see in my case, um, I have a real problem with the toe area because I always scuff up the toes. Um, I got a different kind of boot, which I'm wearing, which has a rubber protection here but on these boots, which are more of a dress boot, okay, there's no protection on the front. So the front area here always scuffs up real bad. I don't know, I don't know what I hit or run into. Um, you can see the uh, The sides aren't too bad, but um, they're due for a polishing and, uh, and waxing because um, when, when they're polished and waxed, um, water will bead up on the, uh, on the boot, okay, and when the uh, wax or protection, well, it's really a wax. It's a beeswax that I'll be putting on these boots. Okay, um, dissipates, then the water doesn't beat up on the boots anymore. Okay, and this is the case with these boots. Okay, so they're due for, for a polish and a wax. You can see I do scuff up the rear here a little bit. These are uh, Red Wing, Red Wing boots, model four, model two four one two twenty four twelve, um, and they were made in uh, August two thousand fourteen. Okay, these are good boots. This is the uh, boot power I'll be using on the boots. It's uh, burgundy. Okay, um, burgundy color, and uh, you can see it's made by Red Wing. Um, they call it a conditioner, but it's really boot polish, as it says here. So, I'm applying the boot polish here. I guess the important thing is really to work it in by hand in all the cracks and crevices. So 
So I put some polish on this boot and uh, this boot has not been polished. One thing you can't feel like my finger is, is how rough the scraped area is here on the leather. And when it's polished, the leather is smooth. So the leather is getting back its moisture or whatever and smoothing out. This is very rough. This is now smooth. It's not buffed out or anything, it's just applied. By the way, these are these are steel toe boots. Steel toe boots. So there is a steel plate underneath here. So I've uh, finished off this jar of uh, boot polish conditioner. I just use a paper towel to uh, to apply it and you can see it is a messy thing so to do but what I've done is I worked the polish into the leather okay um, I'll get a brush here and brush it but what you're not trying to get a shine here as much as you are trying to work the polish conditioner into the leather that's the important part is working the polish into the leather all the cracks and crevices and bruises that were there okay getting that polish um, or the conditioning elements back into the leather that's really what we're doing here and um, I'm doing two pair here by the way there's another pair back here so I have a good brush here I used to work in the polish into the leather. You can you can see this one has done the burgundy boots before if you can kind of see the tint. Okay. But I'm going to I'm going to use the brush here not so much to give it a shine but to make sure the polish gets worked in to the leather. These are work boots, so a nice fancy shine is not as important as getting the leather conditioners back in to the leather of the boot. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this brush to work the polish into the leather. So this boot I brushed, I just brushed out or work the polish into the leather a little bit. I haven't done this one yet, so you can see the difference. Um, the polish does buff up, okay? Um, but the important thing is to feel that the polish has been worked into the leather and the conditioners and stuff are getting in there. I'm gonna do this boot now and uh, brush it. So I'm gonna start working on this one here with the with the brush again i'm just going to brush it to work the polish and the conditioning elements into the leather so i'm going to take a minute and uh, talk about the next step here in uh, in cleaning polishing and waxing my shoes okay um, People back in the 1900s, 1880s or so like that, knew a lot about leather and taking care of it. Okay, so this is an old time formula. This is Red Wing's new modern formula. Okay, but let's see. If you can read this, it says... Um, Pine tar and beans and pine tar and beeswax waterproofing and conditioner. Okay, that's it. Pine tar and beeswax. That's what they used back in the 1800s, early 1900s to take care of their leather shoes. Okay, um, and it works great. I've got a can here. Um, I got somewhere. I, I don't know. I'm 
imagine you can look it up and see if you can still get this stuff. Okay, but it works great. Okay, it's excellent shoe protection. Okay, for uh, especially for power shoes. We'll talk about raw leather in, in, in another episode here or whatever. Okay, but this is Red Wings. Um, this is the past. This is today with Red Wing. Okay, and guess what? This has some pine tar and beans, beeswax in it. Okay, so um, I don't know exactly if these two are equal, but if you look at the ingredients, Red Wing is using the same ingredients they used over a hundred years ago to take care of, of leather shoes. Okay, and this is the stuff I'm going to apply next. And uh, Red Wing calls this natural, natural seal, but it's really a combination of pine tar and beeswax. So the boots, so the boots have been cleaned and polished. Okay, I buffed out the polish and I'm going to apply the uh, the sealant, which is basically a wax. I'm gonna wax these boots now. I'm just gonna apply it with some paper towel. But just like polishing, the important thing is to work the wax, work the wax into the leather, okay? Um, for a protectant, okay? Again, this is, this is waterproofing, okay? And technically, you could use these boots now, but since I do a lot of outdoor stuff, um, the wax here is going to waterproof these boots. Okay, and after I'm done, water will beat up on these boots. So I've put the wax on this boot. Okay, you can see the wax. I'm going to do this boot next. Okay, uh, I've worked the wax into the leather. I'm going to let it set up here a bit. And then I'm going to brush it out, just like the polish. Okay, but I'm not brushing it off, more or less brushing to get rid of the excess and work the uh, wax into the leather. I'm doing this boot next. This boot's got the wax on it. You can kind of see when I rub my fingers there, the wax. So after you wax the boat, the boot, you'll uh, let it dry okay and it'll turn like this white hazy this one's still drying a bit but by the time i buff this boot out because it's it's dry um and i'll buff it out with this brush i have a wax i mean i have a brush dedicated to just buffing out the uh, beeswax on these boots okay different than the brush i used for polishing so this is my wax brush Okay, and now buff this out and work the wax in and remove excess with this brush. And by the time I'm done with this boot, this boot will be ready to, uh, to be buffed out with the brush. So that's what I'm going to do now is uh, buff the wax. So I've uh, taken the wax brush or, or buffed out this boot wax. Okay, um, I still have to do this boot. This boot hasn't been buffed out yet. Okay, but um, this is not like a car wax. Okay, so you're not going for a deep shine here. Okay, you're just looking to work the wax into the boot. Um, I suppose some people could work this and, and get a real good shine. But what you really want is to have this wax protectant on the boot and worked well into all the cracks of the leather okay and again these are work boots and go out in the mud and terrain and stuff like that so you're not looking for a super shine here what you are looking for is a well-conditioned boot and with the wax these are now waterproofed and I mean if you go back and look at before you can see the toe area here 
is that it's still got some scars, of course, because, you know, this is leather and it's scars and it bruises, okay? But it's it's protected now. It's it's soft to the touch. The wax is there, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buff out this one now, okay? But I'm just pointing out we're not going for a, a super shine or a car lock shine. We're just going for a waterproof coating and protecting the boots with the wax. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this boot and going to finish up with the other boots back here. And um, then all that will be left to do is relace up the boots and they'll be ready to wear. So here we are. We're done. We cleaned, polished, and waxed these boots. And here's what they look like. Okay, so this is the after. Got the shoelaces back in, so they're ready to wear. Um, one thing is, after you do this procedure, it's best probably not to wear them for the first 24 hours. Let everything really dry and, and settle in. But, um, there's the boot after it's after it's done. Okay. So here you go. Red Wing 2412s. Okay, and here's the most important part. Made in the USA. So this is real USA leather. It's hard to get anything better than these. Okay. I'm sure you can get more expensive. People will pay anything for shoes. But in my opinion, these are, these are really the best boots. Okay. These made in the USA. Real leather. That's real leather. Real steel under there real rubber or real synthetic super sole or whatever they call it okay these are great boots yep you can see the wax is is working the water is beating up not soaking into the leather that's what you want to see just like on a good car wax, you want to see that water beat up and not soak into the wet, into the leather. You know, a diamond doesn't come from tenderness. No. It comes from pressure, heat, work. And the more that diamonds worked, the harder it is. The longer it lasts. But it ain't just work that makes it last. It needs a gentle touch. Love. Admiration. Care. They say, if you love something, set it free. Well, I don't know about that. Should be, if you love something, put it to the test and see if it lasts. Tough love, Red Wing.